What's going on with the truckers? So OOIDA actually reached out to me, emailed me, my guy George over there, and says this in the email title. He says, OOIDA calls out Carrier 411, enabling brokers blackballing motor carriers on hearsay. So basically, I start looking up some articles. I find an article from Alex Lockie, and that's from Overdrive. And then I actually run into him. So we do a segment about that. What I'm hearing right now is basically there is no recourse if a broker with a one month of authority and a $99 subscription to Carrier 411 wants to nuke your business, they can. And after 72 hours, there is nothing you can do about it. And he actually interviews a law firm about what maybe carriers or truck drivers could do about this. What's the thought process? What, what should they start with? Well, I really always think that the first thing people should do when faced with a freight guard is call the source, try to see if you can resolve it directly with the broker. Because like you mentioned, there's still that 72-hour window to get things resolved before the freight guard becomes permanent. But then after that, when you start getting into legal solutions, the legal solution just got a lot more complicated. It used to be that you be, could just resolve this with the broker. The broker could take it down voluntarily and you could figure it out. But now with the freight guards becoming permanent, it's, it's really an interesting question of how many lawsuits are going to have to start uh, involving Carrier 411 just because they uh, have made themselves a necessary and indispensable party to get any sort of relief from this, this a false statement. And I talked to a small carrier and I talked to this nice guy named Brian and he just says that he's had a freight guard on him and when that happened he couldn't book any loads. If the freight guard was fraudulent, doesn't matter anything. So you could be in business for 10 years out here, have a great reputation, a new broker can come in, be in business for two months, you piss him off, he puts on a freight guard against you and your business is dead. So why does Carrier 411 have all this power? Let's get into this and this right here is not a good thing and I'm going to interview all three. I have it in this video. Here's a highlight clip of all of it. Watch the whole video, but this is something you need to pay attention to if you are a truck driver or a carrier. Uh, a lot of drivers and carriers have a lot of problems with Carrier 411. Carrier 411, don't even get me started. I guess you've heard about the new changes coming up. Tell them. Well, um, I actually had a carrier 411, 411. It's called a freight guard, so that's what they call it. Um, broker put a freight guard on my company. Um, what it, did you do? It was I didn't do anything. It was a mistake. Um, and for two weeks, while I was trying to clear up this mistake, I couldn't haul for anybody but TQL. Nobody would load my truck at all. Nobody, because of a freight guard. You know, isn't it crazy that? And then, like, when when you want to fight it, there's just no way to fight it. There's no way to fight it. The brokers have all of the power against the carriers, and the carriers have no recourse. I mean, I, I was on the phone with a broker one time. He kept hanging up on me, and, and I was getting really upset. You know, I just wanted to get my point across, and this was about inspections. Um, I won't mention the broker. And uh, I called him back. I kept calling him back. I'm like, this is very rude. Quit hanging up on me. I'm like, he says, he's just keep hanging up on me. And so I finally said to him, I'm like, listen, why don't I just come to your office so we can talk in person? That way you can't hang up on me. And I wasn't trying to be threatening or anything of, anything of the sort, but that's exactly how he took it. And so he's like, well, that's a freight guard, right? And this was the first time I'd ever heard of the word freight guard. And then I Googled it and I was like, oh, crap. So uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so the new changes to freight guard is, and I mentioned I had a freight guard and I got a hold of the broker and I presented all the information that I needed to present and the broker agreed to take that freight guard down. But this was two weeks later. Under the new rules that are about ready to take effect, or they have already taken effect, after 72 hours, you have 72 hours to dispute something. So if a, so if a broker files something against your company, you have 72 hours to dispute it. After 72 hours, that becomes live for everyone to see, both what was said and, and your reply. Under the new rules, once that 72 hour period has expired, it can never ever be removed. Doesn't matter if the, the if the freight guard was fraudulent, doesn't matter anything. So you could be in business for 10 years out here, have a great reputation, a new broker can come in, be in business for two months, you piss him off, he puts on a freight guard against you, and your business is dead. Your business is dead. I, I mean, you can't get loaded. When you got a freight guard, nobody's gonna load you. What's going on with the truckers? You know, uh, getting to spend some time with my friend Alex here. And this is great because the other day I interviewed a driver here at Broker Carrier Summit, and he's a small carrier, and he's so scared. He said, Alex, have you heard of this new freight guard 
and they wrote it on this article from this Alex Lockie guy on Overdrive. And next thing you know, I run into you here today. Actually, right. we talked last night. Yeah. And I was like, this is just too awesome. And so when it comes down to it, drivers are nervous about this and they're reading your article. And so could you just give us a little bit more insight about what's going on? Because uh, people really do trust your work and I do as well, so. Well, look, thanks. And I couldn't do it without carriers talking to me and telling me their story. What I'm hearing right now is basically there is no recourse. If a broker with a one month of authority and a $99 subscription to Carrier 411 wants to nuke your business, they can. And after 72 hours, there is nothing you can do about it. I spoke to, for the article, uh, the CEO of Carrier 411, a guy called Darren Brewer, and he told me that 95% of freight guards were absolutely true, nothing wrong with them. Which, first of all, I don't know how he knows. Does he investigate everyone? Was he there when it happened? Seems unlikely. But it also means 5%, by his own admission then, are false. So there are probably thousands of false carrier reviews out there that are killing their businesses, and he won't take your call. He doesn't like to talk to carriers. He doesn't think you guys deserve a voice on the platform, but we do at Overdrive. So come talk to us, check out the article, send us your stories. We're going to stay on this because um, it's important. No, and you know, I was just thinking about this out loud, right? Can you imagine you and I, if we had a business that said, hey, I'm honest 99% of the time, that would not sound great. So if someone yeah. said, hey, uh, come buy a new car from Alex and 95% Alex. 95% of them are good. Yeah, you couldn't say that. That would scare you. That would scare yeah. you. Well, you know, it, it, it just, there's no, like, grace. There's no coming back from the freight guard, it's falling off a cliff. It's happening to too many businesses, it's tough, and you know, he's really getting into murky legal waters on this. When the market flips and brokers are begging for carriers, they might start ignoring some of these freight guards. Is that negligence? If something goes bad, and it always typically does, I hate to say it, you know, God willing it doesn't, but um, he's, he's opened a can of worms for himself, he's pretty unapologetic about it, and um, we're going to stay on the story because here at Broker Carrier Summit, a lot of smart people are talking about it and something's got to give. I heard that, man. And hey, check out Alex and his work at Overdrive. I'll Thank put you. links down below. I hey, appreciate you, bro. Hey, you too, man. Great running into you. Yeah. All right, Mother Trucker. So this segment is getting really great. You know, I, I talked to Alex Loggy. We're, we're going to get him on, talk about an article where he actually interviewed you guys as well. And then I talked to a truck driver, Brian, that is a small carrier that is just so stressed out thinking that after 72 hours, his business is going to be done, right? For, for people that don't know what we're talking about, basically, after someone puts a freight guard on you, uh, no broker will give you any loads. So who are we here with today? Tell me. Hey, everyone. I'm Dan Artave. I'm uh, with Artave at Law, and we're partners with Carrier Defender, and we're trying to help carriers out you know, to resolve issues like freight guards, like false reviews. And it's also been a big part of my legal practice as well, working with these sorts of problems. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Hey folks, Sean, I'm one of the co-founders for Carry Defender. We're just here to have conversations and help folks find out how to protect their reputations. Mostly the truck drivers these days. Notice the small carriers don't really have a whole lot of options to defend themselves against some kind of false review or anything on Carrier 411. So the news is pretty recent. We're still having those conversations, but we're pretty confident we're going to put something together to help everybody. You know, and, and that's the thing, right? So people are worried about this. Uh, where can they get updated information when you guys do have it? Who wants to answer that? Uh, I don't mind. Uh, we've got a website, uh, carrydefender.com. If you shoot an email to us over there, we'll get you a, qu a quick conversation to let you know what, what options you have. Right now, there's not a whole, whole lot of ways you can get a copy of review. And, and the first the first symptom you're going to see is brokers rejecting you on the load boards. When that happens, you need to immediately see if you can get a screenshot of whatever they're saying, find out what platform they're talking about, whether it's Highway, Care411, or the other ones. And if you get one of those to us, we can help you a lot more efficiently. Um, so that's usually where you got to start, guys. But we think there's some options out there. Um, 
but it's it's a news that's very fresh. So we're still we're still brainstorming on how how to best help the folks. Yeah. And you know, and and you doing what you've been doing for so many years, sir. Yes. Um, you know, something like this is very daunting, scary, uh, especially a small carrier that this could put them out of business. Um, what's the first thing you recommend they do? You know, uh, of course, give you guys a call, right? This is not a sponsored video. These are just some friends we're, we're connecting, we're helping people here. But uh, what's the thought process? What, what should they start with? Well, I really always think that the first thing people should do when faced with a freight guard is call the source, try to see if you can resolve it directly with the broker. Because like you mentioned, there's still that 72-hour window to get things resolved before the freight guard becomes permanent. But then after that, when you start getting into legal solutions, the legal solution just got a lot more complicated. It used to be that you be, could just resolve this with the broker, the broker could take it down voluntarily, and you could figure it out. But now with the freight guards becoming permanent, it's, it's really an interesting question of how many lawsuits are going to have to start uh, involving Carrier 411 just because they uh, have made themselves a necessary and indispensable party to get any sort of relief from this, this, a false statement. I hear you. No. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys. Let yeah. me add one more thing, though. Sure. Um, sure. There are still angles to minimize some of the damage if you do get a freight guard because the brokers, even after that 72-hour window, can still update their review with an additional statement. And... Again, if you mediate with them, talk to them, explain the circumstances, and if you can get that broker to say, hey, the carrier reached out to us with good faith and they made it right and we would use them again, I think that'll go a long way in getting you back on the road, regardless if that's still on your MC number. So if anybody reaches out to us, it's one of the first things I recommend. Try to work it out, just like Dan said. Yeah. But there are angles and uh, just... That, that's something I just want to make sure everybody knew. Yeah. And then my last question is, since, you know, I got you guys here, you know, and, you know, I have this question myself sometimes is when things start kind of going the wrong way, you know, is it, is it best to do phone calls or do you do emails so that you have a uh, written record? I mean, what's, what's the best thing, you know? Well, the legal opinion is going to be different than the uh, than Sean's industry perspective. Yeah. From from a legal perspective, I always say get everything in writing and communicate in email. But I fully realize that that might not be the most effective approach, and that's why I work with guys like Sean who speak the lingo and know the industry. Hey, I love it. Yeah. That's good, man.